And the fans got to choose what happened to Jason Todd. Guess how I voted. These videos are not for children. If you're a children, then piss off. Hey there, it's me, your least favorite YouTuber, Vin Fuso. Here to talk about my all-time favorite Robin and why he wouldn't fit in my all-time favorite Batman show. Weird, right? Well, here it is. Now, it's common knowledge that the Robin lineup goes as follows. Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, Tim Drake, and then so on. We're not gonna, we're not gonna talk about the others because I've, I've talked enough about that other one. I, I don't want to do it again. I don't want to do it again. But Batman the Animated Series decided to just cut out the middleman, who audiences had already cut from existence. It was decided that due to the way that Jason's story ended, it would be far too dark for this child show to adapt. So the Robin that died never really lived here. And in this continuity, after Dick switches cities and costumes, it's Tim Drake that takes up the mantle. At least in name. You see, the character might have been called Tim Drake, but he certainly didn't act like Tim Drake. He was spunky, he had moxie, whatever those things mean. He was a bit of a wild card thrown into the equation. He was terrible at taking orders and cocky enough to not follow them even when he heard them. He was a troubled kid who became trouble for those who were responsible for him. His entire presence is Jason Todd inspired to say the least. He acts like the second coming of a character who never came. And I'm gonna ask you now, please don't clip that and deface that audio. It's extremely obvious who the character takes after, especially when you compare him to his source material. Because you see, Tim Drake in the comics isn't a punk. Why, he's mild-mannered. He's not only significantly more mild-mannered than Jason, but even Dick Grayson as well. He's highly intelligent, almost matching Batman's level of detective skills. He follows directions fairly well, and a lot of the time he doesn't even need to get directions because he knows what he's doing. The animated series doesn't have a good adaptation of Tim Drake, but it does, however, have the perfect representation of Jason Todd masquerading around as Tim Drake. And he didn't just act like Jason Todd, for the record. He had the same exact backstory as Jason Todd. And it's a pretty specific one, too. Son of a criminal father who was never around, forcing him to fend for himself and live on the streets. His father worked as Two-Face's right-hand man before inevitably being hunted by the madman, ultimately making the villain Robin's primary arch-nemesis. And prior to joining forces with the Caped Crusader, he was a thief. So the entire backstory I just described for Tim Drake, this was Jason Todd to a T. These are the same exact events, just with an allegedly different character. Once again, if you compare this to the character of the same name from the comics, they couldn't be any more different. Hell, he wasn't even an orphan! Tim Drake wasn't a guy from the streets. He was a kid from the suburbs who had a loving family. He had a pretty nurturing environment. He didn't have it rough by any means, especially when compared to Jason Todd. And ultimately, he serves the same purpose to the story as the original Jason did. Like Jason, Tim's time in the role is tragically cut short due to the Joker. And like Jason, Tim becomes Batman's biggest regret, blaming himself for all the damage that was done to his adopted son at the hands of his lifelong foe. I think you can easily make a justifiable argument to say that Tim Drake is really this universe's Jason Todd. There's a bunch of other things throughout the series that make me believe that this is the case as well, including having the kid smacked around with a crowbar on an occasion or two. Hell of a reference. Now, I've previously heard that this Robin was an attempt at an amalgamation of the two. This was supposed to be Tim Drake meets Jason Todd. But it's clear that this leans a whole lot closer to Jason than it does to Tim. As a matter of fact, outside of his name, I don't really see any of Tim Drake in the character whatsoever. Tim Drake didn't just take Jason's spot in this continuity. He took Jason's identity. And if we're looking past Tim Drake in this series, then I think you could also make an argument that a lot of elements were also taken from the character to create Batman Beyond's Terry McGinnis. I don't know that it's ever been publicly stated or confirmed, but a lot of the same things that endeared me to Jason Todd as a character also endeared me to Terry McGinnis as a character. I have always made comparisons between the two since I was a kid. Like Jason, Terry didn't have it easy growing up. His time before putting on the suit and taking the mantle was a little bit less than stellar. He was admittedly a pretty bad kid. He grew up getting into fights, hanging out with gangs, and like Jason, he had a rough exterior due to his unfortunate upbringing. Both had disciplinary problems. Both went against their training and fought dirty. They were headstrong to a fault. Like Jason, he lost his father at a very young age due to criminal activity. Both of them have the same affinity for their method of transportation. And when Terry first meets Bruce, 
He steals the Batman suit, not unlike how Jason stole the Batmobile's tires. Actually, come to think of it, Tim Drake got the Robin mantle in pretty much the same way. But I think the best indication of Terry possibly being a pseudo-Jason Todd is that the Batman Beyond movie Return of the Joker sees him heavily compared to Tim Drake, who is definitely a pseudo-Jason Todd. So if the continuity is saying that there's a comparison to be made between these two characters, then there's definitely a comparison to be made between this character and the character that inspired this other character. Up until the rebirth of Jason Todd and christening of Red Hood, Terry was the closest thing we had to a grown-up Jason. Like I said, I can't sit here and act like this was their intention. I don't know if this was by design or coincidence, because I never read anything to confirm or deny this, but... For me personally, Terry was kind of a surrogate Jason, and maybe even to some extent, a little bit of a prototype for Red Hood. But maybe that's a video for a different day. My point is, is that because of this universe's incarnation of Tim Drake, and because of the creation of Terry McGinnis, Jason kind of has no place. His story has already been told in his absence. And not once, but twice. For as much as I love this character, I think if he was included in this world, he wouldn't have a whole lot to do. His late-in-life inclusion would only make him look like a ripoff of a ripoff of himself. Unfortunately, his spot has already been taken up. The franchise at this point is at full capacity for angsty brats. Jason just wouldn't make any sense here. So imagine my confusion when I heard that the comic series Batman The Adventures Continue, a follow-up to the animated series, was going to introduce Jason into this continuity. Now granted, how canon this is is disputable. Maybe it's actually attached to it, maybe it's just inspired by... Regardless, the notion of this just sounds like bad fanfiction. Like, what could Jason's inclusion creatively accomplish? Everything that made this character special and unique was sold off to other characters. All he has left is his name. What purpose could he possibly serve here? How could this be anything other than a complete disappointment? Well, join me in finding out. And if you'd like to see a follow-up to this video looking into Jason's actual appearance within the universe, let me know in the comment section below by leaving a comment saying, I still think you're Jason Todd! With all that being said, I was your least favorite YouTuber, V Infuso, and I thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. I am vengeance. I am the knight. And that was V Infuso. Just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. Well, if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too would like to become a V-generate, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, nerds! And if you're not joining the fun, you're in for one bad day. And you know what they say about having one bad day. <laughs> <laughs> Catch him next time. Same bad time. Same bad channel.